beautiful creative people Kyla here for my very first fountain pen Friday so listen I can't believe that I've been on YouTube as long as I have talking about my fountain pens sort of in the background um, and that I haven't done a proper fountain pen series or even shown my collection so I thought I would start this series um, where I share come on once a week and I share with you all some of my favorites um, of all the things everything from pens to inks to journals uh, for your pens to pen rolls and pen cases so today is the very first episode so I'm gonna keep it simple and just talk a little bit about and show uh, the collection of pens that I have. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to save that for the individual Friday um, fountain pen Fridays where I come in and do a proper sort of video slash review slash share with you um, what's in my collection. So I'm glad you're here. I hope you stick around. Let's get into it. All right, so as you can see I've got several pen cases here <laughs> and they just keep going I do I have been collecting fountain pens since I was 17 so this is um, not a new hobby for me uh, so we're talking 30 years or more at this point and so my collection has shifted and morphed and had all sorts of um, revelations the more you use something when you become a collector of that thing whether it's fountain pens or watercolors or paint brushes or you know uh, art supplies and materials uh, whatever that is when you find something you love you start to gather more of those things um, and it also helps you become more discerning and figure out what you don't like so I have had lots of years and lots of pens to figure out what I like and don't like. Um, and so I purchase pens that bring me joy, pens that I know I'm going to love to write with. Uh, I love quality brands um, for affordable prices. So I have a range of pens, everything from $10, $5, I think I even have a $2 pen that I love, uh, all the way to uh, pens that are well more than two dollars <laughs> let's just say that so my hope and my goal with fountain pen friday is to share with you a little bit of the why um, a little bit of the how and then give you some of the other stuff like where where's really great places to buy pens um, and how to pay attention and get really good deals on pens um, accounts to follow on instagram that will um, inspire you to use your fountain pens or use your any any pens um, so as a as an avid journaler I have been using fountain pens in my journaling practice since I was in high school um, a little bit about my pen story my very first introduction to fountain pens was with my uh, in, my high school English teacher Mrs. Inquist um, and she let me it's a, it's a whole longer story but she let me use her fountain pen one day and it changed the way I felt about writing it changed the way I felt about the homework she was giving us <laughs> it changed my appreciation for English and literature and she is quite honestly the reason I have multiple degrees in English and creative writing and she just really sparked something and inspired something in me she was very much uh, the kind of woman that was very um, what we would call put together right she always looked very um, I don't know proper and not too fancy and not too shabby I don't know she just something about her was really beautiful and graceful and she showed me how to write with a fountain pen and that felt graceful and it made me feel graceful and it also made me slow down um, if you've been following my channel a lot a long time you know that I I can talk really fast and I get excited and I do a lot of things and I've got a lot of things going on in my life and I have to intentionally do things to help me slow down like journaling meditation writing with fountain pens making handmade journals things that require me to slow down a little bit and so fountain pens are definitely a part of my wellness practice I know that sounds weird to some of you um, but they really do create in me a sense of calm 
um, and ease and joy. All the things that I think we are all, all have a birthright to, to experience. So, with all of that said, um, and because I know I will speak on this more as I move throughout uh, the Fountain Pen Fridays, um, I'll just say that for me, fountain pens are truly a tool for both my journaling practice, my creative practice, um, a little bit my spiritual practice, um, which for me is meditation and learning how to be still and silent and quiet um, and reflective and introspective. And so um, the collection for me is it's a little bit of my personality. Um, each pen, I think, says some, a little bit of something about me. Um, and then it, there's also a huge community around fountain pens. Um, there are fountain pen, well, when, when the world was traveling and people were going places, <laughs> fountain pen conventions and fountain pen conferences and fountain pen shows. And um, there's a community of people that are just amazing people. Um, supportive and and you know so I will be linking to a lot of these things and sharing a lot of these things um, as a part of Fountain Pen Friday but for this week I just want to talk a little bit about um, just some of the logistics around being a fountain pen collector and what that has meant for me in my life alright so I think I want to start by showing you before I go to the fountain pens why don't I show a little bit of some of my pins that are non-fountain pins that kind of started the collector part of it. Um, let's see if I can find the, uh, the pin that started it all. So when I was 17, I bought a fountain pen, or not a fountain pen, just a regular old pen. Is this the one? This is the one. Okay. So somehow I ended up in a in an in an office uh, office depot, office max, one of those kind of office supply stores, and um, I saw this pen, and I fell in love with this pen, like to the point where I ca I think I came there every once a week for every week until I was able to save up enough money to buy this pen myself, and like I said, I was 17, so I was. Um, you know, I was still relying on, you know, I was living at home still. And I'm saying 17, I think I might have been 16, but 17 when I finally got to buy the pen, it was, I bought it for my birthday. And at the time, this pen was, and I don't even have a, a, a cartridge in it, but this pen was, um, I want to say it was maybe $70, which at the time felt like so much money to me. $70 for a pen when you could very easily get a, a big pen for like like a little you know big uh, ballpoint pen for like 20 cents right <laughs> uh, and so this felt so decadent to me it wasn't a fountain pen I couldn't afford the fountain pens that were in there but this one I could and I keep this pen around because of that because it was my first eventually I went and I got my name engraved on it is my maiden name on there but um, and I wasn't very happy with that, but I did it. It was done. I wanted to mark the pen as mine. And that was years later that I had the engraving done. But this is a Sanford Rem Reddington. I can barely see it. Reddington. And oh my gosh, y'all. I loved this pen so much. I wrote with it. I felt so special writing with this pen. And my writing felt special. And I enjoyed it writing essays and stories and all the things that I was writing in high school right because I was in high school still it was my it was my senior year actually um, when I bought it and so now fast forward years later I don't um, I don't really write with this anymore because I don't like pens that have gold trim now I did then I wore gold jewelry, I had gold rings, right? but now I don't. So, right, we shift and we morph. So, um, that was my original. So, I do have several pens that are not fountain pens that I keep, um, that I keep because they have sentimental value. Some of them I write with from time to time. This was my first visit to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I really, like, I fell in love with this pen because it has this 
this this little piece here rolls right and I was like oh my god that's so cool again I was like 20 when I bought that um, so I've had these so some of these pins I've had for a really long time some of them were gifted to me um, we went to see the Lion King um, and I bought this pin it was um, a pin that they had for sale out you know if you've ever been to like a play uh, they have the, the uh, paraphernalia that you can buy the swag and so I bought this pin for the fountain because it was the Lion King um, pin and so gosh I've had that for years this pin was gifted to me by some students my first year of teaching I was it was an intern and, and my students bought me that pin and had my name engraved on it well they had my um, my name engraved on one side and on the other side they had the definition like what my name means and they did that because I gave them an assignment um, we did a whole like session where they learned about their names and they had to go you know talk to their parents and ask them why they got their name and it was a whole project that they did and some of them learned so much about themselves but also about their parents and about their history and they really enjoyed it and so they gifted me on my last day they gifted me this pen um, and so yeah I have lots of pens here that are this this pen is from my very first trip to Seattle Washington when we took my nephew son Trevor to go off to college um, yeah, every all the pens have you know a, a little sentimental value. This was this this is an Acme pen that is by a um, African American designer um, artist Tom Reeves, and I bought this in Washington D.C. Uh, one year when Damon and I went. And so all the pens have some sort of there's something about them that is special. This pen. Um, it was my first Tombow pen, and I scoured South Florida when I lived in South Florida looking for this pen. Like, seriously. Um, it was a limited edition at the time. They may make them now, but it was a limited edition. Um, it's supposed to mimic the Havana cigar, like the cube, Cuban cigars is what it's supposed to mimic. But my brother-in-law had this pen, and I wanted it so bad, and I went all over the city looking for this pen. So every pen, all of my pens have a story, but um, this pen is from the very first time we went to Hawaii, um, Damon and I, and it is, um, I'll have to find the artist, but it is, I, you know, the camera will never do it justice. It is the, one of the most exquisite uh, pens. It's made out of the koa wood in Hawaii and it has this beautiful resin inset in it. It is just, it is amazing. It's a beautiful pen and it writes beautifully as well. So all of these pens, every pen has some sort of significance. This pen is, um, this was my first Mont Blanc and it was given to me by my dear friend Lyle. Um, and the crazy, crazy thing about it is it is called Generation and I don't know if she even knows this, but she gave it to me the same year that I started a literary journal called Generations. And so, like every pen, every pen has has a story. So I won't go into all the stories of all the pens, and these pens may never even come back up because this is Fountain Pen Friday, and none of these are fountain pens. But I thought I would just show you where the collection began. I didn't begin as a fountain pen collector. I actually um, started as just collecting rollerballs and um, gel pens, and that has been that. That's where I started. These little cases um, hold 12 pens each, and sometimes I rotate my cases out. But those two um, hold all of the pens that are my um, that are not fountain pens, right? And so let's see if I can even find so here this pen this is not let me just say this is not a proper fountain pen case I'm actually <laughs> um, I'm actually transitioning and moving things around um, but this this is a case that's probably best suited for like um, colored pencils or something like that you can see I can't even close it it's so full um, and if I did close it I would be squishing my pens together and I didn't feel too good about that so um, so I've kind of got them in here by color. Let's see if I can get them all in the camera at once. Probably not. But um, So I'll be talking about different pens. I have some pens that are made by artisan makers. Um, so this is like a one-of-a-kind pen. I have, a, I have several one-of-a-kind pens. Um, this is another um, 
this is not a fountain pen, but I keep it in here um, because I like it in here. <laughs> uh, and then I have brands that I love and follow. So this is one of those $2 pens I was telling you about. But it's a $2 pen that has been tuned. Um, and what that means is the nib has been uh, adjusted by one of the master pen uh, grinders. Um, it was done at a, a pen show. And so the pen is a cheapy pen, but the nib has been tuned and the pen is astonishing how beautiful it writes. It's a really great pen for sketching also. It has a nice fine line. Um, so like I said, I have pens. This is one of my, let's see if I can find one of the very first pens. So this is a, one of the very first sort of collectibles that I bought. This is a Recif uh, pen and it is, I got this at an estate sale and um, it just has a beautiful, you know, it's not, I wouldn't call it an antique because I'm pretty sure you can probably still get these, but for me it was the first time I ever bought a fountain pen from like, like a used fountain pen. So anyway, I have lots of pens to share and show and talk about um, and space for more pens. And then I have sort of my pens that I'm, I kind of keep on my desk that I'm always going back and forth between and using currently in the moment kind of things. They stay on my desk. Um, I really love retractable fountain pens. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about those as we move forward. The Twisbees, um, the, the Diamond... Um, the Diamond 580s. I really love. I have two of these. I've got a couple of other Twisbees that are the Ecos that I love. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit. Obviously, you you're going to hear and you know and then pins that are you know kind of like uh, really maybe difficult to get um, specialty kind of pins. I will be talking about a lot of different pens, but the pens you're probably going to hear the most about on this channel, if I'm being quite honest, because they are my absolute favorite brand of pen, favorite pen company. I've met them. I know who, when I see the name of who grinded the nib on my pen, I know the names. I've hugged these people. I've been in uh, multiple conversations with them, and I adore this company, and that is Franklin Christoph. And so you're going to hear a lot about Franklin Kristoff uh, on this on the, on the Fountain Pen Fridays because um, they are the kind of company that I believe cares about their their people. Um, I'm just moving pens out of the way. I think they they care about their product. They they create a quality product. Their pens are gorgeous you can I love that you can get uh, one of the kinds when you go to pen shows you can get some prototypes one of the kinds which I have several of those um, and I do have even within their line I have specific models that I really love um, and so you'll be hearing a lot about Franklin Kristoff because I have quite a few of them and making space for many more of them to come to my into my life <laughs> So the Franklin Kristoff line is, you'll have, I'll say a little more when I start reviewing and talking about their pens. I will talk a little bit more about the different models that I love. Um, the O2 is my absolute favorite. And then um, the 45 is really nice. And, I'm, and I just acquired my very first 25, which is a really, this might be one of the early ones that I review. Um, it's just a really beautiful um, unique little pin, right? The little cap slides onto the onto the clip, um, and it's just a beautiful, gorgeous little pin. So I have a whole story around the Franklin Kristoff brand and how I came to find them, and the whole story around them. And I will share that as we as we journey together through this process. One of my most treasured pins is this hybrid Schaefer um, Schaefer and Franklin Kristoff. It has a Franklin Kristoff body with a with a Schaefer uh, cap and nib. And this pen is it was um, restored by Jim Rouse, who is um, no longer with us. But I I treasure this pen deeply um, because of that, because of him. And I'll and again when I get to that pen and share it, I will give you a whole story around that. And so the Franklin 
Franklin Christoph brand is just it's a beautiful collectible because when you find the the, the model that you like you just you know you just want to own all like this this was an accident that I own two that are exactly almost identical there's a little bit of difference between them um, but I really like the uh, I just love the, the quality of their pens so even though these look very much alike they are pretty much the same the finial is different on this one um, and the the grip section is different on that one um, and and it was an accident right I didn't realize that this pen this was a special wait this one was a special edition that they did with uh, Van S pen company and I think it was Van S I'm pretty sure and this was one that I bought as a prototype at a pen show and I ordered this one and when it came in I was like wow that looks like a pen I think I already have I opened my case and I was like holy smoke I have two of them um, and you know oddly enough I almost bought this pen again uh, just a week ago and I said you know what I better check my case and I opened my case and I was like I already have that pen <laughs> um, but this is the model 02 and I just love how it posts what it looks like when it posts it's such a beautiful beautiful exquisitely created pen and then I have a bunch of prototypes from them right and then I have some that were um, special limited editions and so yeah they're a really great um, really great company um, and I, I love I adore their pens and I adore the folks who work there and that matters to me like they I walk into a pen show and they recognize me and they speak to me and they right and I think that that is beautiful customer service so you'll hear a lot about Franklin Christoph on Fountain Pen Fridays. Trust that will happen. Um, this is actually a Franklin Christoph case. Um, doesn't have Franklin Christoph pins in it, but it's called the Pinvelope. It's like an envelope, Pinvelope. I love it. Um, and it actually has uh, another pin that I really love to collect. And this is a pretty um, inexpensive pin. It's called the Super 5. Uh, but I just love the, um, this one is not, um, I love that it, you know, it's a snap cap as opposed to twist. Um, and I just love the weight of it. And that's something else I'll talk about as I start to do more um, Friday, Fountain Pen Fridays for y'all. Talk about things you should be looking at as you begin to use pens and decide because some people will say, oh, I tried this pen, but I really didn't like it. And I say, yeah, well, did you think about this, that, and the other? Um, and there are things to consider when you're buying pens. So Super 5 is another one I really love. And then one of my all-time favorites that I've been collecting, I think probably maybe started the collecting of fountain pens as a hobby, I guess, are the Lamy Safaris. And I have several of them. Quite a few of them actually. Let's see if we can get them all in the, in the screen there. So these three on the end are not safaris. These are the ALs um, and this one isn't even a fountain pen. This one is um, a rollerball. But the very first Lamy I ever received was this one and this was gifted to me by a student and I have tried for the life of me to remember her name and I cannot but it was one of my seventh graders. She went with her family um, to, oh my gosh, uh, I want to say it was Belize that they went and she brought this pen back to me because she saw me using fountain pens and they would come up to my desk and, Miss, you know, can I use your pen? I'm like, no, 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 I'll give you a pen you can use. And so they knew that I treasured this. So she brought me this Lamy back um, and I have used this thing for years I love this brand and I'll talk a little bit more about the Lamy brand but what I really love about them is they are a collector's brand and what I mean by that is every year they come out with a limited edition color sometimes they come out with three in one year this was uh, 2019 I think they came out with these three colors um, in one year right um, but but they have you know really interesting combinations and it's just a really great pen one of the things I love about it is it writes as soon as you take the lid off you don't have to like get it ready to write it writes Franklin Kristoff's do that as well like they just write right out of the right out of the cap and I love that about them um, and then I just love that I can 
you know, collect. I've been trying to do like a Roy G. Biv in my in my thing here. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what, just put them in. So this one I got in Barcelona. Um, a couple of these I got from Fountain Pen Shows. Like I called this one my Papa Smurf pen because of the blue and red. Um, I got this one at a Fountain Pen Show. This orange one is called The Flame. And I think it's, you know. So I will talk more about the brand Safari and share some of the Safari pens and talk a little bit about how they write and how to how to pick the right nib because there's lots of different nibs you can get um, for for most pens you, there are a lot of different nibs you could get different nib sizes um, and then just little things like you know Franklin Christoph makes these beautiful pen rolls um, that are just like this one is I think it's called the boot boot leather but it's like a canvas it's like a waxed canvas it is just gorgeous and amazing and so yeah um, and then of course what kind of fountain pen person would I be if I didn't also share with you um, you know I'll talk a little bit about inks these are actually three Franklin Kristoff inks that I haven't even opened yet this is the graphite um, the red 187 and the honeycomb which I actually had this pen inked up with at a, at a show about two years ago maybe and oh my god this color is amazing so I'll do a little bit of uh, swatching of ink colors and show you that because I as many fountain pens as I have I probably have twice as many inks um, I'm just looking around to see if I see my my little ink uh, container I'll bring the inks up in a second here but um, so I'll be talking a little bit about inks as well um, I like to get lots of sample ink so I can try inks and play and see which ones I really like. So I'll tell you some uh, of the best companies to go to for inks, for samples. Um, and then I have, you know, I have a ton of cartridges and things that I use as well because some companies have proprietary cartridges like Lamy pins only take Lamy cartridges. Um, but I'll show you a little bit of hack for that as well, how you can hack, hack around that. So, um, and then of course I will talk about um, pens that I haven't even inked up yet. Like here's a Moon Man that I haven't even inked. I've had it for months, um, probably since November of 2019, and this is July, and I haven't even inked it yet. Um, but I've had it for quite some time. So, um, yeah, all the things. So we will talk pens and paper and journals and companies and brands um, and then I'll share a little bit of like uh, pen fodder for you and what I mean by pen fodder um, and maybe I have shown my collection before you know I'm starting to think about it I'm like maybe I did but we'll restart and do it again right we'll, we'll go ahead and just start it again um, if you really want to begin to get into the world of pens um, you should check out the Pen World magazine, the Journal of Writing Culture. It is a beautiful, um, I want to say quarterly, and speaking of Franklin Kristoff, look at that right there in the front cover. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure if it is, let's see, bi-monthly. Okay, it says right there in the masthead. Bi-monthly, but it is talk about you know fountain pen candy you know it's like beautiful you know you can learn all about new pens that are coming out new inks that are coming out um, you can learn the history of things you can learn about some of the people uh, sort of the fountain pen community celebrities uh, so to speak you can learn about um, all sorts of things they have articles in here they have historical information about pins from the past and pins that are be, being redone and new pins and um, just beautiful yeah beautiful uh, information about about pins and just learning about all sorts of all sorts of pins and so yeah this is this this is what I consider fodder um, this is like Sunday afternoon with my tea reading the pen world magazine when it comes in in fact I think I have one that I haven't even taken out of the envelope yet um, 
that I need to get to, but I like to savor them. I like to sit with them and be with them and read them, like some people do with like Vogue or Cosmo or Essence magazine or Ebony or whatever magazines you read. Um, you know, Good Housekeeping or whatever. Mine is Pin World. So I will come back and I'll share um, a little more detail. I just wanted to give an introduction to the Pin World or to the uh, Fountain Pen Friday that I plan to do here on this channel and um, I'll be talking also about journals and handmade journals that I use and how I make my own journals for, for my fountain pen use um, and then you know every now and then I do every well every month I do a page in my journal that is my currently inked like what pens I currently have inked and what what ink I have in them and I will talk a little bit too about the difference in paper the paper makes a difference like Let's see if I can get really close. I don't know if you can see the sheen, um, but he, this is what's called a sheening ink. And then in my Twisby Diamond, there's an ink that has a shimmer. So shimmer inks, sheen inks, um, shading inks. We have all sorts of things to talk about. So I will be um, sharing all of those things with y'all. So. Thank you so much for being here. If there's something you want to know more about with fountain pens, you know, I will, there are a lot of people on YouTube talking about fountain pens. Um, but I hope to bring uh, a different sort of spin on it because I would love to offer, um, you know, a little bit of conversation around how fountain pens um, can work for, for instance, there are two other Lamis that a lot of artists really love right so this would be like how to bring fountain pens into your creative practice how to bring fountain pens into your journaling practice your bullet journal practicing uh, practices all of those different ways that we can um, reconnect to an analog sort of uh, tool but for more modern modern mindfulness so thank you so much for watching thank you for being here and I can't wait to share more fountain pen conversation with you all in the comments below I sure would love if you leave me um, maybe tell me what kind of things you'd love to learn about or hear about in regards to fountain pens I have some ideas but I'm always open to what you all would love so make sure you like the video if you want me to continue to do more fountain pen Fridays and subscribe to the channel so you know when I upload new videos um, there will be on the next fountain pen Friday I will be giving away um, a fountain pen I actually have uh, three fountain pens that I'm going to be giving away. Um, two of them um, I'll be giving away one on Instagram, one on Facebook, and one on here YouTube. It will come with a handmade journal from me filled with Tomoe River paper and a couple other little uh, bits and bobs including some little ink samples for you. Okay, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you back here Friday. Take care. Bye.